Um, I'm going live because I'm super excited. Uh, I, um, I've been talking to people all day about how I would approach, uh, telling the public and telling the audience about what's going on with my, uh, civil lawsuit. I have a 1983 civil lawsuit filed in federal court against the District 7 court in the state of New Mexico against Judge Mercedes Murphy, Judge um, Murdoch, I uh, can't remember her first name, and uh, two court clerks, and student, including Susan Rosenthal and uh, Jason Jones. Um, I have two attorneys representing me that have filed this lawsuit for me, Zach Cook and Blair Dunn in New Mexico. Um, they... <laughs> are absolutely incredible. People have told me in the past, you can't sue a judge. You just can't do it. Um, these judges have stepped so far out of line, so insanely far out of line, that not only was I able to find one attorney that would sue the judges for me, but two. Um, and and I, can't even, I can't even tell you how incredible they've been. But we, we filed the lawsuit, I, I think it's about two months ago now and got absolutely no response. Let me silence my phone, sorry. Um, they went into default uh, because they, they didn't respond at all to the lawsuit, which is why I haven't published anything telling people what's going on, uh, because nothing's gone on. They, they defaulted. Um, they didn't even respond at all. They didn't even come to the federal court and say, oh, well, you know, uh, we're defending ourselves violating his rights because X, Y, and Z is the reason that we should have, we should be allowed to violate his rights. Just nothing. And it was, it was odd. It was eerie. It was like we, the whole time we're going, man, what is going on here? Like, this is unheard of. Nobody just fails completely to respond to a lawsuit even you know even in the private sector you sue somebody they respond but let alone uh essentially legal experts judges absolutely refused to respond to a, a, a filing of a lawsuit in federal court um then just about two weeks ago they finally retained counsel and uh and their counsel entered their appearance. And um, the default had already been entered, though. It had already been entered by the court clerk that they were in default. Um, James crying again. Hey, what's up, Dr. Disinfect? Thanks for being here. So uh, the default had already been, been entered, and the representation um, uh, finally uh, puts themselves on the record. And so... After that, with no filings whatsoever being made, uh, the, f the federal judge grants um, the defendants extra time to uh, enter their pleadings in court. Um, from what I understand, this is pretty unheard of. Uh, opposing counsel is at least supposed to file something, a motion or something saying, hey, Will you please grant us extra time? Which which tells us, I mean, where did the judge get this idea to grant this extra time? Was there an ex parte meeting um, between somebody? That I mean, where did she get the idea to do that? W would nobody, nobody in the entire world asking her to do it? She just did it, um, and that's fine, but but very suspicious, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so m my lawyers met with opposing counsel yesterday and they opposing counsel uh, the the judge mercedes murphy judge mercedes murphy who who violated my rights um to uh free press um without due process by making a completely arbitrary administrative court order saying that i cannot cover matters of public interest um, on the court, that I can't publish news stories about the court. She made a, a, a administrative order saying I can't, I can't come in and run stories about the court. And uh, so now she's she's agreed that, and and she's tried to have me thrown in in jail for contempt of court for 
running stories about her ridiculous behavior, right? So now she said, all right, here's the deal. Um, we'll agree to not maliciously prosecute you for contempt of court. And we'll just let this all go if you will just simply stop exercising your right to free press and stop coming in and documenting our, our corruption and especially just stop publishing it. The deal of a lifetime. Mercedes Murphy said, if you will just stop exercising your rights, James, we'll pretend none of this ever even happened and we'll just, we'll walk away. And the uh, besides the civil end of this, there's never been an actual uh, criminal charge on me for this. But the DA has decided to work with the, uh, it, it appears, to has decided to work with this the, the, the uh, judges who have violated my rights and, and said, all right, I guess if he'll agree to stop exercising his rights, we'll agree not to maliciously prosecute him. That's the deal. Now, charges have never been filed on me yet, but they actually said, hey, here's the deal. You stop exercising your rights and we won't even file charges on you. What do you guys think? Huh? <laughs> threatened you know James we James Freeman we've threatened you we've bullied you we've intimidated you to try to get you to stop exercising your rights and you have consistently told us no you're going to continue to exercise your rights but but one last time we're gonna say <laughs> come on dude just stop just stop exercising your rights and we'll stop maliciously attacking you oh yeah I know right so tempting like so I'm looking at this and going, um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, sounds like extortion. Look, <clears throat> my only goal in anything in, in everything that I'm doing here is to show you guys what's actually going on. I've told you guys before, all I'm doing is documenting the downfall of a society. I'm not even trying to stop Judge Mercedes Murphy from being a tyrant piece of crap and and um, and causing the... I'm not trying to stop any of these police because I, I've seen what actually happens. I've seen everybody go to court. I've seen people get case law. I've seen that the legislation is never on their side, but they still continue to do what they do with absolutely zero accountability. And so, you know, call me a pessimist, call me whatever you want, but I don't come into this thinking, oh, I'm going to hold them accountable. Because I know I'm not. I know there's never going to be any personal accountability for Mercedes Murphy for intentionally and maliciously violating my rights and trying to, to use the police to violently attack me for doing it. I know she'll never be held accountable for it because accountability would be Mercedes Murphy in prison. Accountability isn't James Freeman getting a settlement or, or ruling in court so that the next judge can, can just go and do the same thing over again. I, Accountability would be Mercedes Murphy being where she belongs, where we put criminals who harm others. We, we put them in prison, all right? And so I don't come into this stuff with the same mentality that most of these guys do, that I'm going to hold you accountable. I only want to, want to point my camera and show the world that you're not going to be held accountable. That's it. So I don't even really want to fight. I just want to show the world what's really going on. But by God, if you're going to fight me over me showing you what's going over me showing the world what's going on, I'm going to do it with the gloves off. That's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> so you're going to come at me and tell me, I'll give you a deal. You just stop exercising your rights and we'll stop maliciously attacking you. I'll see you in court, Mercedes Murphy. Because you know what? The, the whole thing that these people didn't want is to be exposed to the world in the first place. Now, what does carrying on this lawsuit do? Every single act that they take to maliciously attack me proves my point. Any charges that they bring up proves my point. Right? 
every single thing that they do is a win to me. And I don't care if, you know, asking, going and suing a judge is, you're, you're asking a judge to admit that another judge did something wrong. Have you guys ever gone and asked a cop to admit that, a, that another cop did something wrong? I mean, look, I got to tell you, I'm not looking for a judge to rule on my side. I'm looking to show you guys what's going on. All right. So win or lose in court, I'm not here to win. I'm here to show you the battle. I'm here to show you that they don't even obey their own rules. And every single time that they fail to obey their own rules by maliciously attacking me for it again, there's another battle won. So you know what? Just the fact that you offered me a deal that if I just simply stop exercising my rights, you'll stop maliciously attacking me, that's a win. Now when you go and maliciously attack me for not taking the deal, that's a win. When you maliciously attack me over the next two years, four years, five years, because I exercise my rights and I refuse to bow to you, that's another win. Because you know what? My only goal is to show the whole world what you're doing. That's it. Throw me in prison. Okay. You're going to, you, see, you're not going to stomp me out. You're just going to create tens of thousands of more people just like me. Because when the people see what you're doing to the other people, you piss them off. They start to realize, hey, they're going to do this to James. You better believe they're going to do it to me too. I better stand up. Every swing you take at me creates more of me. <laughs> um, so here's the other thing that they did. Um, they, <clears throat> they sent an email. Uh, you guys saw recently that... Uh, um, you guys saw recently, I'm sure it's, it's been national news even. I can't, and of course, I still can't remember the details of it. Almost everybody's covered it. Both mainstream media and alternative media outlets have covered the police raiding uh, a news outlet. Uh, was it Kansas? I'm sure someone in the chat, about a thousand people in the chat at least will tell me. I think it was Kansas where they, they raided the newspaper, right? Uh, there you go, Marion, Kansas. Th everybody knows except for me. And you know, I don't, I don't know what they think they're winning by doing things like that. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what they do to that newspaper. It doesn't matter if they completely destroy that newspaper. What they've done, the whole world sees it. The, everyone in the United States sees it, and they, and we look at it and we go, "Holy crap, dude!" This is exactly what we've been told is, is the reason we live in the U.S. instead of China or Russia or, or North Korea. We live here because our country doesn't do that. Our country's government doesn't control the media. Our country's government doesn't maliciously attack the media when they run stories that, that aren't favorable to the government. So, I mean, every single time they do something like this, <laughs> to those of us who really just want all of you to see what's going on, we are winning. Um, so they also send something to my attorneys saying that they want, um, they want me to preserve all of my journalist materials for them so that they can come and take those materials from me. They, they've said that they, they need me to preserve all my journalist materials because they intend to come and try to bully me and, and take those journalist materials from me, including any conversations, private conversations that I've had with confidential informants. Because they know that there are people, not just within their police departments and their legislature, but within the judicial system in New Mexico that are giving me information. They already know it. It doesn't matter because I delete it all as soon as it's, it's read. <laughs> but, but they know, and they're trying to bully anybody who would, who would be giving them, who would be giving me information, who would be giving information to the news. They're not just trying to bully me at this point. They're trying to bully anybody and everybody who would give information about their illegal acts and their misdeeds. You can't make this stuff up guys. You can't make it up. <clears throat> so I will 
uh, be doing some edited videos over the next couple of days uh, with the receipts to show you guys all of what's going on. Um, the default judgment that was entered in the federal court, or I'm sorry, it wasn't a default judgment. Uh, uh, whatever, all the documents that, look, I'm not an attorney. That's why I have attorneys. <laughs> I do not, I do not understand uh, entirely the legal process. I understand what's right and wrong and I understand um, you know, I understand the philosophical end of things, but the, the legal process, I don't. That's, that's why I have attorneys and, and they're doing an awesome job for me. Um, but I'll do some edited videos to show you guys all the documents, show you the receipts, this is what's going on, and this is the level that they're willing to go to. I actually thought that when there was no response and when they went into default, that maybe, just maybe, they had finally realized they are so dead wrong on everything that they've done maybe they're just gonna shut up so that this can be over and to be honest i was a little sad about that i really was i i told my attorneys well if they quit swinging then i've got nothing left to publish <laughs> if they quit violating my rights i don't have any story left that's it it's over <laughs> And sure enough, they just come out and oh, throw all these ridiculous punches. Um, so thank you guys for that. <laughs> but this is, you know, the reason that I'm that I am almost almost glad that they're doing it to me is because the truth is that most of the, is that they do this to other people all day every day, right? And most people don't have the platform that I have to tell the story. So they're railroading. Most of the people that they do this to, they're just railroading them. And so for them to, I would, you know, to me, it's like, hey, pick on somebody your own size, right? If you're going to pick fights and you're going to treat people like crap and you're going to violate people's rights and, and you're going to, you know, if you're going to do this anyways, pick on somebody your own size. And they are. Um, so, um, I've, <clears throat> I've already considered the absolute worst case scenario. And, uh, the thing is that you, you can't control someone who doesn't have fear. Right. And I hope that, that more and more of you out there can, can start to realize that they have control over us because we fear things like them taking things away from us, whether it's taking away our money or taking away our freedom, or even taking away our life. But if you can genuinely and truly get yourself to a point where you are truly, completely unafraid of everything being stripped and taken from you, then they can no longer control you. They can throw you in a cage. They can take all your stuff. They can even murder you. But they can't actually control you. And that really, really pisses them off because that's what they really want. It's not about keeping law and order, all right? It's not about keeping law and order because if that was what it was about, I do support that. It's about arbitrarily controlling you and making sure that you know and you remember that you are their servant because that is the way they see it, that they are in charge of you. And then when they say to do something, you sit down, you shut up, and you do it. it has nothing to do with law and order. So I've already considered, worst case scenario, uh, a year in prison or they kill me. A year in jail or they kill me. All right. Let's go. Let's take the gloves off. See you all in court. I'll put up some edited videos about this for you guys later.